everyone, I'm Terry Duke, and this is part 2 of my guide on how to play my favorite mod from Mountain Blade Warband, Paris Snow. If you haven't seen part 1, I suggest you watch it first, link in the description. For everyone else, let us resume. Part 4. Starting from nothing. Okay, so now let's get started. The first thing we need is money. Money to buy gear, money to hire soldiers, you get the point. Easiest way to make money quickly in Perisno is to fight in tournaments. With the limit for bets extended to 500, you could win 20,000 Oroms per tournament, which is more than enough to get yourself some decent equipment. So at the start of the game, learn about the whereabouts of tournaments and head there. If you're short on cash, you can win a thousand Oroms from winning in melee fights. Also, be careful where you go for tournaments. Tournaments in Forneron, the Alien Tor Capital, are exclusively archer fights, which can be very dangerous. Tournaments in Giant Factions will feature Giants and it's all melee, so maybe avoid those too. Tournaments in Torrenia, Makavia and the Rank are more similar to Native, where you might have a better chance. Careful though, as some fighters are very skilled. If possible, stay on a horse. When traveling the land early on, I would suggest you avoid all bandits as much as possible, with maybe an exception for robbers, who are basically looters if not a little better equipped, but absolutely avoid deserter groups, as in Paris Snow they tend to be pretty high-end. Assuming you have a horse, groups that are beatable include Sandwalkers and Drahara, Snowcrawlers in Makavia and the Reich, and maybe if you're feeling lucky, Dovalier Raiders in the same area. Bandit groups to avoid at all costs early on include escaped prisoners, outlawed criminals, wolf knights, eagle knights, grazier worshippers, holy crusaders, divine idlings, the ankars, and any other that I'm forgetting to mention. The most dangerous areas in Paris Noir are definitely from the Reich to Ilintor, and the safest is the Valahir clan thanks to large groups of militias that roam the small land area. Part 5. Creating your warband. When it comes to forming up your own warband, you have two options. You can either get low-tier troops for cheap and train them, or buy high-end mercenaries in taverns. The mercenaries are expensive, but you'll be glad you have them if you come across a powerful warband like Wolf Knights. If you decide to get low-tier troops, make sure to avoid all the major outlaw groups at all costs, because your troops will get whooped. Instead, make sure you or one of your companions have high trainer points to passively upgrade your troops while avoiding fights. Another way of getting plenty of troops for free, though it's more random, is by searching for bandit groups. Now, the world is crawling with bandits, caravans, and faction patrols that will beat each other up and take prisoners, so it's not uncommon to come across small bandit parties with a lot of prisoners. Beating them will give you the opportunity to rescue all of their non-bandit prisoners. Bandit prisoners can be transferred to your own party, that way you can get a lot of good troops without a hiring fee and give the rest to ransom brokers for a good price. That's the other thing, a good source of income is selling prisoners to ransom brokers, which all the taverns have at all times. As you build up your warband, earn money in tournaments and odd jobs from lords, you should also start recruiting companions found in taverns. A lot of them are pretty expensive, but they are also pretty OP, coming with their own gear and already providing a lot of party skills, such as healing and looting. Shijin, the samurai one, will join you for free as soon as you see him, so don't hesitate. Part 6. Becoming a Lord so, as you compete in tournaments, save up your money, and slowly, cautiously build up your warband, it's time to become a vassal. You don't actually need any battle experience to become worthy of becoming a vassal. The renown from winning a few tournaments alone can give you the opportunity. As to which faction to join, it depends on your end game here. For me, I intend to become a ruler later on, so I don't really believe in supporting any given faction over others. The goal right now is to secure some passive income from owning a fief, get the opportunity to find in a few wars, all the while leveling up, improving your warband, and completing unique quests. I'll get to that in a moment. So my goal is ensuring that whoever I align with, the fief I will get will be pretty much safe from raiding, so I can rule out any faction in the center of the map. I ended up going with Ilentor as the queen will give me one of the villages around Forneron, which isn't likely to be raided by the main rivals, Torrenia and Akon. In retrospect though, I should have gone with the Valahir clan, as the large warbands would protect any village I own no problem, so if you share my goal, maybe give the Valahir clan a shot. Feel free to help your thieves with several tasks. This will not only improve the prosperity of the village, which means more income for you, but increasing relations ensures they will offer more, better recruits when you need them. Having good relations also means you can raise taxes without any worries. Another good source of income at this point is from buying land in towns. When you visit a town, you have the option to visit the landowners. By buying some acres in the town, you'll get passive income every week. The only problem with this is you don't get the money until you actually show up to the town to cash out. 
Keep that in mind if you decide to buy land everywhere in Paris, no, because you'll be touring the whole continent constantly for your money. However, if you do have a village, Paris now has the diplomacy mod, so you'll have an accountant in your village to handle finances. When you go to him, you can ask to cash out on all of your funds, and he will automatically give you all the money that is accumulating in different towns. I would say, given how ridiculously expensive parties get the better your troops get, buying land becomes a must as you progress through the game. Part 7. Rise to Glory So, quick recap. By now, you have a decent warband and you're a lord with passive income. What's the next step? Improving yourself in your warband. For that, you can now follow the marshal of your faction and campaigns for some epic battles. This will improve your warband massively and the renown you get will allow for more soldiers in it. Groups of bandits won't be so dangerous anymore, so feel free to tackle some of them too. Here's a quick graph I made showing what bandit groups you could attack and which groups you should avoid based on the state of your warband. The groups in the last category should only be attacked if virtually all the soldiers in your warband have reached their peak upgrade, because seriously, these will be brutal fights. But the main objective at this point is to start the unique quests. If you want to learn more, go to the wiki page. All unique quests with rewards and walkthroughs explained. A lot of these quests involve fighting huge, powerful armies, so you need to prepare your warband for that, but in the end, the money, the renown, and of course, the items you get from these quests can only benefit you. For instance, the Kingslayer Sword is possibly one of the strongest swords in the game. The Aegis Shield doesn't just look awesome, it's the toughest shield in Paris now. So fight in wars, improve your fiefs, upgrade your soldiers, complete quests, do all of that until you feel ready to become a ruler. During that time, you should also send your companions to spread the word about your right to rule. By the time you're ready to leave your faction, you should have an army of elite soldiers and a lot of money. 